the asset register within Parish Online. Um, I usually start these meetings uh, with a <clears throat> sort of advisory to start with. So we are recording the session. Uh, the purpose of that is so that I can send you the video afterwards along with the presentation. So hopefully that should reduce the need for you to take notes as we're going along, uh, because you'll get the chance to go back over it in your own time later, should you wish. Uh, today's session does include an interactive session using a smartphone or a tablet or laptop. So for those of you who have those, you're very welcome to join in. The rest of you, um, we find that people quite cheerfully follow along uh, as I go through the motions. Um, and by all means, um, interrupt me anytime if things are um, going too quickly or too slowly or I seem to run off track. So what we're going to cover today is why on earth is an asset register in the first place inside Parish Online. Um, we're going to talk about its infrastructure, which is different from all the other layers in the system. Um, and we'll cover what is the most frequently asked question about asset registers. We will go through the asset register itself in quite some detail, and then um, some hints and tips on getting ready to move your current register into the Parish Online one. And then the interactive session is about geolocation, which is usually quite entertaining. So why do we have one in the first place? Well, one of the purposes behind Parish Online is to get data out of the filing cabinet um, all out of spreadsheets into a 24 by 7 system that lots of people can use. Um, it sort of gets rid of the, the, the problem that occurs when the parish clerk goes off on holiday with the keys to the filing cabinet in her pocket or his pocket. Um, and as you see, I've mentioned once or twice here that there is an insurance reason, reason for the asset register. Um, once stuff is inside Parish Online, then making reports um, and adding in data about inspections, maintenance cycles and so forth is very much faster and easier. And it gives you a brilliant um, track record, if you will, if you need to demonstrate due diligence or good governance, it becomes a piece of cake when everything is in the same place uh, and readily visible. So um, you'd be surprised that uh, I have mentioned insurance um, in here. And if we go on to talk about it, um, the reason is, is that for insurance, good record keeping is paramount in, in both directions. So when you need to make a claim against something of your property that's been damaged, uh, a good record keeping is really helpful to the insurance company. And even more important, arguably, when they're defending you against claims, uh, it really is uh, almost a sort of an open shut case if you've got a record of all the uh, inspections and the intervals and the dates and shows that you have been doing what you agreed to you, you should be doing as your policy. Uh, and that makes your um, defense much more powerful. Um, I'm not one that advocates fear as a reason for doing things, but um, there are several um, documented cases within the Parish Online history of um, things going against councils. The classic one is a, a tree falling on top of a coach as it went by underneath, and the paralyzed driver um, cost the council £500,000 because they had not. Uh, inspected the tree at the intervals that, that they had been advised they ought to be and they couldn't prove that they had either so the whole purpose behind the asset register amongst just giving a good value to your um, assets is to help you when it comes to um, making the case uh, when people are claiming against you uh, the second to last bullet point uh, is crucial. I learned rather to my surprise the other day that um, it's now a policy amongst fire departments that if a building is uh, a, a fire and there's nobody in it and no other buildings are threatened, they'll just let it burn. They won't bother risking human lives of the firemen to uh, put out the fire on something that's just going to burn down. Um, and so replacement value is now crucial as far as the insurance companies are concerned. So they have to value uh, what it's going to take to um, completely rebuild the building. Um, funny enough, when I took over as a parish councillor, I had a look at the 
the asset value of our village hall and thought it was way too high. Somebody had valued it at £600,000. I just couldn't see looking at it what on earth there was that was worth £600,000. And BHIB gives you a desktop calculator that lets you calculate what the value should be. So I applied that and was horrified to discover the proper value was 1.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, it helps. All right. Um, I promised to talk to you about the special layer in the asset register. So within Parish Online, which is you know, essentially the Orton Survey's digital map of the UK over which you can lay all sorts of layers. And the most common layer in use is a third party layer, i.e. one that's been supplied by uh, some other organization. It's often part of the government, whether it's DEFRA or the Environment Agency or any other uh, numerous numbers of, um, of, of parts of government, or they can be uh, private. The people like Historic England and Heritage England and so forth uh, also contribute invaluable layers as does the National um, Allotment Society. Then the, the layers that you create entirely yourself. So you're wholly in charge of the structure, you're wholly in charge of the data that goes in there, and you can make changes and edits as often and frequently as you like. It's all yours. And then finally, there's the asset register, which is sort of combination of the two. So the structure of the asset register is a given. You have no control over that nor its style, nor the geometry, i.e. whether it's points, layers, sorry, points, lines, or polygons. It's all determined for you by the structure of the system. But the reason for that is that it's used by all parish council, well, look, all those who are using parish online have the same asset register structure. And basically, uh, we'll go into that in a bit more in, in more detail in the future. But the only thing you have control over in the asset register is what data you put in there. So that does mean occasionally that you find the asset register doesn't have all the information that you need to store. So the way around that is to create your own complementary layer in your parish layers. And then when the time comes, you just present both of them at the same time. It works very well. Um, and we'll go into more detail in a few more slides. <clears throat> So the most frequently asked question about the asset register is, can we import the data from our existing spreadsheet into Parish Online? And unfortunately, the most usual answer is no, because your spreadsheet is unlikely to have location data in it, i.e. in terms of lat long, easting, northings, whatever, in a format that Parish Online understands, i.e. a GIS format, um, and by the time they've sorted all that out, it's usually quicker just to manually transfer it. So if you happen to have a huge asset register and you happen to have information on, on approximate locations like street names or something, then uh, Parish Online will give you a helping hand, uh, but only when it's clear that the amount of work they save you is, is huge. Uh, general, as a general rule, particularly with the smaller parishes, um, it's, it is easier just to manually transfer it. The good news is you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it. So whenever you've got a few spare seconds, just transfer another asset or two. And by the time we finish today, hopefully we'll have found ways of speeding that up for you. So what is the asset register? Well, it's a ready-made collection of layers. So on the left-hand side of this screen, you see the typical column of, of layers. This is the collection level, the top level. Inside the asset register are all these other layers and they're all created for you. You have no control over whether they're there or not. And you don't have any control over the structure of the layers inside here. Um, but that doesn't matter because there are advantages to doing it this way. Uh, because experience has basically shown that the, the layers that are here and the columns of data that you store in them are the ones that are, are most needed. Um, so experience is, is sort of coming to your, <coughs> your assistance here. Now, it's not that these are carved in stone. So um, for instance, it's become clear that more and more parishes and councils are having to worry about what type of light is on the streetlights 
and the types of light pole, and there's no entry within the existing layers to allow for that. So they are rewriting um, that particular layer. Uh, so they will respond to um, requests, and they have recently created the community forum, which is one way of um, increasing the number of people that ask for the same uh, request. And uh, we'll go again, we'll go into that later because I've got a pet request in that I'm asking everybody I teach to, uh, to join in. So when you input your asset data from your existing column, whether it's uh, you know in a spreadsheet or whether it's pieces of paper in the filing cabinet, um, what you need to determine is where you're going to put it inside these layers. Where does it belong? So to show you how we decide that, I'm going to click on this buildings layer up here. And you see that changes us to the feature editor, which gives us all the fields of information uh, that we're going to look for. The category one is outlined in red, which means you've got to put something in there, but notice that it's a drop down list. So it's, it's a matter of selecting one of the many choices in here. And uh, we chose the buildings layer because it's the only one that contains the UPRN. So all the other fields apply to every other layer within the asset register, but this is the only layer with the unique property reference number. Crucial because the unique property reference number is used by everybody that is associated with things like insurance, the fire department, the police, they all recognize the UPRN. Uh, and what we will show you is how you're gonna find it. So each of these categories changes depending upon which layer you're in. So we're just going to show you that. I'm going to click on category. <laughs> Sorry, click on category, click on category. And you see this drop down list. Now it's a scrolling list. So as you slide here, you, there are many more um, opportunities to choose as a part of the building category. Um, and then just to show you that this changes with every layer that we choose and go up here and change into a, a different layer, the building's contents layer. Uh, a note of caution here, when you click on this uh, layer, it would be reasonable to expect only those layers available within the asset register to show up. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. What you see is every layer that's available from the third party layers or from you, the ones that you've created in the parish layer. So you get a choice of hundreds. Uh, what we're gonna show you is that you can um, save yourself a lot of time by typing in the first few letters of the layer that you want and the, the list shrinks rapidly to the one you want. But we'll, we'll get to that in the live presentation. At the moment, we're just gonna click on buildings and change to the building contents layer, which I've done here clicked on categories and you see it's, it's a completely different list. And again, this is scrollable. And basically this list of categories changes for every layer within the asset register that you're in. Now, the best way of finding out the full list of layers and categories is by going to the knowledge base, which lists them all for you. Very helpful, a very useful video that shows you what you should be doing. Um, and the way to find that, if you're not familiar with it yet, is in the top right hand corner of your parish online, there's a cogwheel. Clicking on that brings you a drop down list which contains health and support. And that takes you straight to their brand new knowledge base, which is actually extremely good. Um, I had asked all people to um, store the URL of the knowledge base as a bookmark because you can jump to it at any time you like without having to go through parish online. So it's much more quick to, and efficient to just jump to uh, the knowledge base as a bookmark. So um, that's where you go, this address here, which will come to you when you get the copy of the presentation, um, uh, takes you to the knowledge base and you get the full list of all the categories and layers which you can then print out and have by your side. Now, the reason you want to do that is that when you're shifting data from your existing asset register within into Parish Online, um, you want to be able to write down on each row of your spreadsheet which layer and category you're going to put that information into. So, uh, as I said, you get those from the knowledge base. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a demo shortly, which shows you how you can find the, the, the list shortening feature. Uh, when you're in the asset register, what you're going to do is use attachments to generate a track record. So um, 
as I've tried to show you in the bit talking about insurance, um, your ability to win a claim or, or to uh, succeed in, in making a claim is much strengthened if you've got a record of showing that you have indeed maintained inspections, you have done proper maintenance at the correct intervals, uh, and all of that is best done digitally by making a copy of every inspection report that you get, every maintenance report, you just scan it and send it into Parish Online and we'll do you a demo of doing that as well. Uh, but it's how you get a, a, um, a sort of a, a due diligence, if you will, to show that you have indeed been um, working responsibly. Um, we'll talk about using screenshots to track date changes. We'll do you a demonstration of how you can change the date system very quickly. Um, and you'll see why you need to know that. And I think the next thing is probably going to be the demo. Be the demo. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a demonstration here, which will cover these points on this slide. Um, and we'll come back to the slide when I finished. Um, but at the moment, um, I'm now just going to drop out and go into Parish Online, which will be here. I'm going to log in. And you can see I'm on British Telecom's fastest possible link. So into the asset register, click on anywhere you like. We're going to go into buildings, just right click anywhere in the layer and up comes the mini menu, permitting you to add a feature, which is what we want to do. So <coughs> I'm going to add a feature for test purposes um, into the buildings layer. And we're going to select the village hall uh, to do that. So I'm going to go into category, scroll down until I find a village hall and say, that's what I want. Um, so that's now filled in the red box, which is absolutely essential. I'll come back to the UPRN in a minute um, because I promised to show you how to do that. So we can just say that this is the village hall or even a village hall. Um, and then I promised to show you why scrolling through the dates quickly is possible. And if you just click on the date purchase, which might be back in 1990 or even earlier than that, something like that, you can see that going backwards through the months and the years is going to be very time consuming. So the quick way around that is to click on this main uh, title up here and it'll change to a year only. It's now very much faster to drop back to, let's just say 1993. say it was September and let's say it was the 3rd of September so now we've put the date in very quickly um, and you're going to be asked to do this several times the last valuation date the last inspection date so getting a hang of how you do the fast selection of the dates was important now you'll notice that the save button here is still grayed out that's because we filled in the boxes we had to or we wanted to but we haven't actually put the village hall anywhere on the map yet so you may well have guessed from the fact that all these icons are roughly in the same place that I keep putting a new village hall on our recreation ground with each session that we do. So we're going to put a new one in there. So now that we've put it in place, we can click on save and it will change to a village hall icon, which is very nice. And the editor here changes to um, a new record in case you want to add yet another village hall or anything else. I'm going to use this session just to show you how you can change layers. And let's say we want to do something, I don't know, to do with planning. If I just type in P-L-A-N, then we get planning straight up. And you see it's jumped me straight down through several hundred layers to get to this one. And these are the only ones that contain the word plans. So the way to do it is just typing in the first few letters here and that automatically shortens the list to the records that match. Very convenient, very helpful. Uh, and we're gonna completely ignore it for now. <laughs> so <laughs> I've closed that feature editor because in order to show you how the rest of the system works, you have to, uh, particularly doing attachments, you have to create the record first, which we did. Then I close the editor and then I click on the, the new village hall. So I click on the icon there, it takes me back to exactly the same place. Uh, but this time you find that there are the, this extra box here to add attachments. 
So you can't add attachments when you're first creating the record, but you can add them at any time thereafter in edit mode. And we got to edit mode by just clicking on the icon, up pop the box. If I wanted to make any changes to anything I've added in here, then I would click on the pencil and that puts me in edit mode and I can add anything here. And if I want to add an attachment, I just click on the plus sign and I can choose anything on my computer. It can be a photograph, it can be a document, it can be a maintenance report. Um, in this case, we can add our certificate of auditory competence. Um, and that will roll away for a bit and now it's there and you can download it. And I take advantage of this moment to say that if you're doing inspection reports, maintenance reports and the like here, they're all likely to have the same name. So over time, you'll build up 10, 20, maybe 100 different reports, all with the same long name. So my recommendation to you is you always start with the date, put it in in year, month, and day format, because that way it will sort chronologically. And then you can just go and find the month you want and then pick out uh, which maintenance report or inspection report you want. So I just suggest you start with the date. It makes the sorting so much easier when you've got hundreds of records to find to work your way through. Because hopefully as you use your asset register, you're gonna build up lots and lots and lots of these attachments as part of your due diligence. Now, the other thing I promised to show you was finding the UPRN. So that's hidden for you in the address space. So we're gonna just close this layer for the moment, go back to here, shut the asset register down and come down to addresses. And in the address layer, there is address space plus points. Turn that layer on just by clicking on it and a, a dot gets applied to every building in the country. And by right try clicking on any of these dots, you can bring up its data record in the left column. And lo and behold, the second item is the unique property reference number. So that's where you find it. I've just copied it. I'm now going to go back to my village hall and edit it, go into edit mode, and I can now add the UPRN just like so. Well, it would be if I'd made a proper copy, but you can see the point. No. No, you can't see the point? <laughs> well, I, I obviously failed to copy properly. I did the copy and paste. Let me just I'm leave deleting everything. So, Let's kill that and save it. It'll kill it. We go back to the address space. I'm going to click on any building. Find the UPRN. This time I'm going to do a proper cut and paste. There's the cut. Come back to my village hall and plot in the UPRN by clicking on the pencil and paste it. And there's the number. So that's how you get your UPRN number or into your record. So you find it on the map by clicking on the uh, address space layer. That will give you the UPRN and then you can put it into your asset register. Could okay. I just, what do the blue dots mean? The blue dots I think are for commercial buildings. There's a system in Parish Online called View. Oh, sorry, they don't want you to do it and that's open. Let me come out of there. If you do view legend, it comes up and tells you. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry, I should be in the address space there, which I'm not, I am now. Our victory hall is put down as a blue dot, you see. Well, isn't that interesting? So how interesting, well, well, well blue dot, because it's a town hall. Okay, it's already set up for you. Right, but thank you. You're saying it should be an icon. You, you've got a dot rather than a, 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 an icon, have you? I've just got a blue dot. Interesting. In fact, um, well, yeah. let, me, let me give you a chat to you afterwards rather than take up everyone's time at the moment. We'll, we'll look into that um, and see if we can find out, Sheila, what the issue is. Um, so I think I've covered everything on this demonstration. Let me just go back to the uh, presentation. Let's go back into slideshow mode. And what we've done is we've added a, a new village hall, shown you getting the UPRN. I've shown you shortening the list. Uh, we've done the fast date selection. Oh, I didn't do the screenshots. So if we go back again to the Parish Online stuff, 
and we go into our parish layer, so we go into our village hall, let's do that. So you'll notice that there are a couple of dates that you need to keep track of, the last valuation date and the last inspection date. And as you put these in, you know, add, you change each of these, but it doesn't keep a record of what the one was before that. And for proper diligence purposes, you probably want to keep a track of what the last valuation date was before you made today's change. So the way to do that is just to do a quick screenshot and then save that as an attachment. So you get a copy of through time of the the um, the dates before they change. Is that clear? I'm not sure if I made myself clear there, but basically you're building a, a track record of those dates changing uh, more or less at the right time. So that you, again, you're just showing that you have been operating as a, um, a well-organized parish or council. So that was that one. Let's go back to the, uh, there here, let's go back to the slideshow. And so that was the screenshot. It talked about naming the attachments, hopefully with the date first. Sorry, Brian. Um, yeah. I, I didn't actually see how you actually do a screenshot. Oh, well, I mean, it varies depending on what type of computer you're in. So if you're uh, one of those strange people that uses Windows, <laughs> first of all, um, go and get your head examined. And secondly, uh, there's something in Windows called, um, I think it's just screenshot. No, it's yeah. snapshot, isn't it? Um, if you Google it, it, it tells you exactly how to do it. I'm afraid I've so long since I touched Windows that I've forgotten. Um, but if I did it here, just to show you, uh, let's see, I need to go over to, let's say, Parish Online. I need to go to Parish Online. There we go. So Parish Online, I've got a screen here and there aren't any dates here, but let's just suppose there were. If I, on my Mac, click Shift Command 4, it says, what do you want to do a screenshot of? If I've done three, it would take a copy of the entire screen. If I've done four, I can just say, snap that, click. I don't know if you could hear it, but it's now appeared down here in my screen. On a Mac, it saves it in the desktop. And you can then just reabsorb it back in as an attachment. In fact, why don't I do that? So I go to the attach, I go to the screenshot. It says add an attachment. Go to my documents, which is desktop or documents desktop, I think. Yes. And here it is. Here we are at 3:30. Yep. So that is now the snapshot of that particular feature. Let's put it into here, and there it is. So in the future, if I want to look at it. It comes up and says where you want to save it, and then you can just look at it. Um, hopefully that's made the point to you. Coming back to the presentation, uh, we've just done, I've, e I've even given you two attachments, so you're very rich today. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Other things that you can do with the asset register. If you've not come across it before, table view is, I think, a fabulous tool. And basically what it does is give you a much simpler way of editing records in the asset register, particularly if you've got to do more than one change to more than one record in any one session. A table view helps you get to lots of records in one go. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, table view is uh, one of the options in your upper menu, the main menu of Parish Online has table view as an option, or you can get into it by where we were before, when we right clicked in a layer, you get a drop down menu and table view is one of the choices in the drop down menu. And what it does is it, it, in the layer that you're in, when you did the drop down and, and sorry, you, I'm, I'm making myself really bugged here. Let me just show it to you, it's much simpler. So, Go into Parish Online. Let's go. Really help you go out of the way. Thank you. Let's go. So if I'm in the parish register, which is not a parish register, it's a register, and let's just say we're in our buildings one. 
if I right click anywhere here, then table view is one of the choices. So if I go into table view, it says here are the entries in this particular layer of the asset register, but you can always change it. So we, we right clicked in buildings, but if you actually want to say, I want to see what's in building con uh, contents, I'll select that one and your list will change. And we don't have many in the building contents in the building. Um, so that was possibly not a, board, a good choice. Let's go back to the building itself. Uh, this building wasn't there. Let's go back to building. Buildings, we are plural. So we've got several buildings here, and this is a bit like a spreadsheet. You've got rows upon rows. Each, each row is a record. And you can get into edit any of these by just clicking on the field that you want to change and rewriting it. So uh, if I wanted to say, well, I don't want to change, this is our live record, but let's just say this is a test hall. I can go into here and say, this is test hall three. And then you just click anywhere else to save it. And it's now been saved. Okay, so you can imagine if you've got say 50 or 60 records and you want to change, well, I'll, I'll change the spelling of that one. That's a lousy spelling. So let's go for removing the O. And we've done that, just click elsewhere and it saves it for you. And then you can scroll across to the right to get all the other fields, uh, sorry, the other columns or you can go up and down to get the other records that you haven't covered. Um, so it's just a very fast way of making changes to lots of records at a time, instead of just clicking on each icon on the map and having the record come up in the left column and you make a change and then you save it and then you move on to the next one. This is a much faster way of, of working on it. You cannot create records here. Um, for the same reason as before, you couldn't import your asset register because you don't have any um, geographical location data when you create a new record. So what you can do is you can amend any existing record here. Uh, so this is the best, I would suggest this is where you come to, uh, to do something. There's a lovely feature here. If I select this one, and say, view it on the map, it takes me straight to the particular location of that one, just jump straight to it, which is very convenient. If you want to see if you've lost track of who you are, where you are, what you're doing, just jumping to where it is on the map is convenient. If I go back to table view, uh, I can also do an export and export this particular layer of the spreadsheet, sorry, of the asset register to a spreadsheet, which again is handy if you want to work on it. So table view, very helpful, uh, I think. Let me go back to the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> getting information out of your asset register. The first thing we're going to show you is the asset register export. So on the main menu, there's a, a, a drop down called tools, and the bottom line there is asset register export. And I've done that for you. So here's tools. If I clicked on that, it would show you the asset register export. That's brought up this left hand column where it says uh, what format would you like? Now, at the moment, you can only get a PDF format, which I think is particularly helpful, but not as helpful as having it in CSV format so that you could exit the entire lot into a spreadsheet. That would be really helpful. So I've asked if you would please add your support for this uh, in the community forum, and I'll show you that at the end. Um, if you're not already familiar with it. So by default in this asset register export, it turns on every layer in the asset register. So every layer is, is ticked. If you decide that in this particular report, you only want three or four layers, you can go in here and there's a deselect all, which then unselects them and you can then deselect the three or four that you want. Or if there's one particular layer that you don't want, um, you can leave them all turned on and just click on the one you want turned off and it deselects it. So the include maps and the include zero rows information here uh, is very useful to put a map of where each icon or each feature is, say for the uh, insurance companies to know about, uh, but it needs a little bit of explaining. So there's a very useful question mark here. If you click on the question mark, they give you a great 
um, explanation of why you might want to do this or why you might not want. And one of the reasons you might not want to do so is that if you start creating a map for every registered item in your asset register, then you're going to have a lot of maps in the report. And that means it takes quite a long time to generate. Well worth it if you're happy. Um, I just give you a warning that it does take time. So when you're set, you click on generate report and you'll get the impression that nothing is happening. OK, because actually this report, as you'll see in a minute when I show you one, is quite a big affair. So it takes time to create. You may get a little one of those circular arrows chasing themselves around, showing you that it's generating. But the way you know it hasn't finished yet is if the open box is still grayed out like it is here. If it's grayed out, you can't uh, do anything with it. When the report is finished, this becomes uh, all boldened and usable. And you can just click on it, which I'm doing now. And this is the report in PDF format. And you can see I've got 95 pages of the report here. So it's a big thing, but very useful. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go there. Very useful for when you're doing your um, renewal of your insurance. This is a way of making sure the insurance company has got the complete record of everything that you're insuring. Um, and you know, obviously you've left out those items you don't bother to insure, but you certainly want to make sure that all the ones you do insure are in here. So that's the purpose of this report. Very useful, but I think it would be better if it was also available in CSV format. So I told us to mention how you get other information out of the asset register. Well, every record you have, when you click on it and it comes up, it has these icons at the top. You remember we clicked on the pencil to edit things. You can click on the dustbin to delete things. You click on the funnel to filter things. And then you've got this little three vertical dots here, which is a sub menu. And when you click on the vertical dots, up come these two. Now, data extract is what we're interested in. So I'm going to click on the data extract. Uh, what it does is gives you the choice of saying, which layer do you want to extract from? And then you just run. And it gives you the chance to do filtering if you want to filter. Uh, and then when you click on run, you'll get a report that is indeed uh, ready to export to um, a, a spreadsheet. So you can get all your information out this way. It's a great way of seeing what you've got in any particular layer. Uh, the disadvantages of it is that if you want to get a record of everything in every layer, you've got to do this for each layer one by one, which is why I want that other report, the export report, to um, come out in CSV format. But this is how you get the data extracted from any particular layer into a spreadsheet. Right. Now we're moving on to the interactive bit for those of you who um, are looking to save time when creating your asset register. So we've mentioned um, several times that it really improves the quality of your asset register. If there's a photograph, of the items in your asset register in the record. And the easiest way to get a photograph, um, obviously, is to go out and take a picture. But you can save yourself time by making sure that you're actually running Parish Online in your smartphone. Uh, and then what you can do is walk out to the particular tree or um, bench or street light that you is going to put into the asset register um, this system will track you as you go along and it will move the map within parish online to represent exactly where you are very much the same way as google maps works on your phone um, but it brings up the opportunity for you to snap a photograph and immediately it, that photograph goes into the asset register so you can come back to your desk click on the asset register and you'll find that you now have a picture of the, um, the bench or wherever you were a few moments ago. Very, very convenient. Um, brilliant if you've got school children around and you can send them out and say, please go and photograph every bus stop in the place and put it into uh, Parish Online and you're getting your work done for you by eager six-year-olds or whatever they happen to be. Um, so for today's exercise, um, let me just check if anyone is um, is going to have a phone or a laptop and going to go through this with you. Anyone, any yeses? 
we or we all know is we're not ready for this yet. I have a phone, but um, I haven't got it loaded on my phone. I've only got it on my PC. Okay, well, that's that's quickly done, and we do that on the next slide. I'm just checking um, how quickly to go through this because it's it's slower if we wait for people who are going to be doing it. But it sounds like you may be, um, Sheila. So let's go through. So we're going to demonstrate photographing an asset so that the photograph becomes the attachment to that asset in Parish Online. Now, normally you'd go out and look for, you know, your park bench, your street light or forever. But today, because we're doing this exercise in your her office, um, we need you to uh, select something near you. It can be anything that you like. It can be a desk, a waste bin, a computer itself, shredder, flower pot, whatever. Um, and you just add that to your asset register for the moment. Don't worry, we're going to delete it at the end of this session. So you can just do that for fun now. So I would ask you to go into your asset register, select an appropriate layer, which is probably going to be building contents, and then add whatever you've chosen as a feature, um, probably within the business equipment section, and you can add desk or flower pot or shredder or whatever you're going to photograph there. I would suggest you put the word test in the name so that we can find it later and get rid of it. Um, Sorry, yep. I've got photos of an, a new cycling uh, system we're going to put in the village. Can I, can I, can I use one of those photos? Uh, yes, you can, but then you lose the um, option of actually uh, putting it directly into uh, your building because you're not standing anywhere near the recycling bit where that's going to be, are you? Or is it going to be living in your office? Oh, I thought I could pick up a picture. So I have to be actually here and doing it here at this moment. Uh, um, yes, because, because this is how the system works. So system. what you're basically going to do is go to, um, when we get around to doing this on your phone, you will then take a picture of the item with your phone and it will pop up in Parish Online. So what I'm suggesting now is whilst you're sitting at your desk in Parish Online on your computer, just create this... Um, temporary feature so um, whether it's your desk or um, whatever it happens to be near you just add that to your asset register and these here on the screen are the steps you need to do so you go into the asset register you select a layer i suggest building contents um, you then right click to get add a feature and it asks you for the category and i suggest you do business equipment and give it a name and include the word test in the name. So if you're going to do a, a desk, just do a test desk as the name of the item. Um, and then on the map, click where your desk is, i.e. On, on your home or if you're in your office, in your office. So you're actually physically locating on the map the item that you're going to um, take a photograph of in the asset register so this geolocation system works much better if the feature that you're going to look at already exists in the asset register it doesn't work so well if you try and create it whilst you're out there um, in the field so to speak because doing it on your phone is a bit finicky doing it when you're in the peace and quiet of the office is much easier so create the asset whilst you're in the office on your pc uh, and then we'll switch to show you how you see it um, in your telephone. Okay. Okay, so now let's move to your telephone. <clears throat> and the first thing you want to do is to go into Parish Online via your browser. So the way to do that in your browser is to type in parishonline.xmap.cloud slash login and then log in in the usual way. Um, now that can be finicky, so we usually take a little time over this bit, um, particularly if you've not done it before. For those of you who aren't actually doing this for live, uh, what we're going to do next is then get the phone to turn on geolocation, which means that the basically the parish online map will then move. Uh, with you as you move with your telephone. We're not actually going to move the telephone today because uh, we don't have the time to go out and look for a convenient 
a park bench, but this is how you turn the system on. So we could we go through it now for reference to you later for those of you who don't. Mutations mm. on strength mm. of Glutac. Remember my username, sorry. So, how are you doing, Sheila? Have you managed to get Parish Online running in your phone? I just need a username because I haven't got because it has because I have to look at my username. Oh, yes, yeah, that's always a problem. I think I better update the prerequisites for this so they're a bit more detailed so that this isn't done, this is done in advance. So for those of you who are not doing this on your phone, this still applies on your desktop. And what I mean is that these options are available on the desktop copy. It's not going to have much effect, but um, you can go through the motions and just see what you do on your desktop. So when the time comes to do it on your phone, you're already experienced in it. I'm sorry, I, I don't know my password easily because it's already set up in my computer. Yeah, uh, that's often the way she, I'm sorry. Well, let's, let's not bother then. Let's just carry on doing it on your desktop for the moment. Okay. So... Um, what we're going to do now is turn on geolocation, uh, in this case, on your desktop. So in the bottom row of your um, main screen for Parish Online, there will be three vertical dots, a bit like the one I showed on the previous screen, but down the bottom row, depending on um, what sort of operating system you're using, it may be on the left or it may be on the right, it's probably just to the right of the left column three vertical dots, and if you click on the dots, you'll get the option of toggling geolocation on or off. If it's not on already, then when you toggle it, it'll go on with a little tick mark. Yeah. And a blue dot should appear showing where you are, and your browser should ask you if Parish Online can use your location, and you want to say allow. And then in the middle of the bottom of your screen, there's a crosshair icon, yeah. And you need to toggle that so it becomes a filled icon color. So it's not an empty uh, icon, it's a filled column with a, a dot in the middle. And that all that means is the map is now going to follow your blue dot. Of course, since your computer isn't going to move anywhere, that's irrelevant. But I'm just showing you how you do it when you're on your phone. Thank you. Okay, so... <clears throat> When you've got to the feature you want to photo, we're now assuming back you're on your smartphone, you get to the park bench you want to photograph, you turn off the follow button just so that um, you get the chart, that's that little icon, just so that the blue dot doesn't get in the way of the feature. And then the three, venue, the three vertical dots at the bottom give you the chance to turn on the correct layer for park benches um, in the asset register. So you find that particular item, the park bench, and you click on it and open up its data record in this, the way that we've been doing all day today. You know, you click on something and the data record opens up in the left-hand column. You'll find that that happens on the telephone as well. Scroll down to attachments and click on the plus sign for attachments. And it says, what are you gonna add? You say a photo, then you take the photo and it automatically adds it to your parish online record. And then you can do that as many times as you want, i.e. to lots of park benches or street maps or sorry, street lights or bus shelters or whatever. And when you come back to your desktop, you'll find that those attachments are now in the appropriate records. It's a great time saver. I should mention, there is the most wonderful video on doing this in the knowledge base. So it's only about a minute and a half long, maybe it's certainly less than two minutes, but it's a lot of fun. It shows you precisely what I've been talking about, and it's, it's much better at showing you than I am in talking about it. So um, when I send out uh, an email at the end of today's chat um, with sort of helpful ideas and hints, I'll send you the link to that particular video because it's, it's a very good one. It shows you precisely uh, what we're talking about. But it, it's, it's actually, I found, very, very satisfying to go out in the field and actually see the things that you're storing in your parish online system and take a photograph and then you come back and find lo and behold the photograph is now 
attached to the correct record. I, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, anyway, that was for um, those guys who are using the phone or are going to be using the phone. Um, just to summarize what we've done so far, we've explained why there's an asset register. We've talked about um, how it's designed and how it crosses the entire country. Everybody uses the same system across the UK that's using Parish Online. We've actually used it. Um, we've talked about editing and attachments, reporting, data extracts, and table view. I did mention in passing deleting it. When you're in the, uh, you click on the item on your map and it comes up in the left column, there's a dustbin at the top. You can just click on the dustbin to delete a record, or you can click on the pencil to go in and edit it. Um, and we've talked about geolocation. So that's today's session. We move now to questions and answers. Um, and I'll just come out of screen mode or screen sharing briefly, just to um, see if anyone has any questions. I promise to show you the community register, which I'll do in a second, but yes, the quick one from Sheila. How do you mon manage the users uh, putting information on? Um, I mean, that's a matter for how much do you trust your colleagues? So you can give users different rights and the rights are read only, which is self-explanatory. Uh, the next one up from there is editor, which means that they're allowed to make changes to layers that they have created or have been created for them but they can't create any new layers, so they can't do a vast amount of damage. The next layer about that is a database manager or a data manager. And basically they can do everything that you as the administrator can do, um, except add new users and um, pay the bill. Um, so you take sure, uh, your, hat, your sort of heart in your hand and, um, and, and trust people because by and large, there aren't many miscreants around. They don't deliberately go and sabotage you, but I don't suppose it's completely unheard of. Um, you don't upset too many people. <laughs> you mentioned children taking photographs and putting them onto Parish Online. And I was wondering, how does that happen? Oh, um, well, they, you're letting them run around with Parish Online on their phones. And if you've um, impressed them sufficiently that what they're doing is important community work, then they tend, um, most of them, to be very helpful. Yes. What happens occasionally is you find that a children's um, definition of a bell shelter is actually what you would call a grit bin, but that just, <laughs> you know, it's worth it to get the people involved with community work at an early age. Um, we, we found that it works extremely well. The local school here is very positive about getting the kids involved, um, and we've not had any issues. But you're, you're quite right. Uh, I should mention, it's a good opportunity to mention, uh, Sheila, that you can create an account that is used by all of them at the same time. Just call it school child or whatever. You give them a single password, they all log in at the same time, they can all use it at the same time and everybody's re work gets recorded. Uh, that saves you having to create, you know, 50 separate records, one for each child and then the passwords for each of them and they've all forgotten their passwords and this sort of thing. Get rid of the problem by giving them one account, have them all use it and have one simple password and then what delete level it. What they have? I give them editor rights, which is the lowest level at which they can add new information because you're only going to let them into the asset register. Um, right. Anyway, that was that. Any more questions or shall I go on to show you the community forum? Yeah, Graham, I was just going to ask, I've occasionally tried to print off a map that I've created and it comes out incredibly faint. Um, yes, there is a gizmo at the bottom of your uh, Parish Online screen called, um, now I have one of those senior moments, I completely forgot what it's called. Anyway, down here is the, to the toggle mask, all right? And what this, uh, the idea of toggle mask is that it will highlight anything around the parish boundary. So if you're doing anything in your printing that is close to or involves the parish boundary, you'll find that what's outside the boundary can be faint 
and what's inside it can be bold. Are you finding that? So if I show, do an example, let's turn on toggle mask. All right, let's scroll out a bit till we get the parish boundaries involved. So is, here, is, uh, Brian, sorry. So again? Could you screen share it so we could see what you're doing? Oh, I bet. <laughs> yes, that'd be much more helpful, wouldn't it? I beg your pardon. Let's screen share. I had wasn't doing that. All right, so screen sharing, you should be seeing, uh, I don't want that, that's for sure. Are you seeing my screen now? Yeah. All right, so down the bottom in the middle, there's this green bar here, which slides left or right. Turning left, slides it off. Turning it right, slides it on. And if you see, watch the screen, when I turn it off, this lot here, which is outside my parish boundary, which is inside this line here, is going to go to the same level, uh, sorry, uh, same level as brightness as this one. Yes. And you don't see it so clearly there. If you turn it on again and now toggle the mask, you get different colours. So that's really obvious, OK? This is my parish. This is outside my parish boundary. And the idea of the toggle mask is to highlight the difference if that's what you're wanting to show. And if you've been trying to print with the toggle mask on, that's why you're getting a very faint screen because this is a three-way toggle. So this is to dark mode at the moment. If I toggle it again, I go to whiteout mode and you can only see inside my parish. Or if I toggle it again, it goes to sort of faint mode and this is fainter than the main thing here. And if you turn it off altogether, everything becomes the same degree of intensity. And I think that's what you've run into. Yep, you're quite right. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now I was going to show you the community forum. So if you go up to this services cog wheel up here, click on help and support, it takes you to this screen. And I suggest that you save the URL here as a favorite. Um, so you can come back to it at any time. You don't need to go through Parish Online to get to this. But when you get here, the, the two tabs of interest here are the knowledge base and the community forum. So the knowledge base is where you would find out anything you want. Just type in, uh, we've just been doing geolocation. Uh, if you go into here, then up pop, this is the video. And it's only about two minutes long, but it's a lot of fun. Well worth doing, uh, well worth watching. Or the community forum is comparatively new. And the idea is it's a bit like sort of Facebook or Instagram or something. If you have a question, you pop up and you add it here. And if anyone's online, they'll answer you straight away, which is what you're hoping for. But it's also where they want to um, start topics of discussions. And so when they created this asset register export, they said that uh, future exports could be in CSV format if there was demand for it. So I then wrote in and said, let's just follow this. Uh, I hereby register a request for this at once, since most of the point of the asset register is to record due diligence and be really helpful to export or to a CSV format. And then the way you score points is by saying, yes, I agree. So I've got three people so far have agreed, yes, it's important, they, they want it. Um, but I'm trying to persuade more people to say, yes, they think this is important. And the way to do that is just to click on the main title here. That brings up this screen and you can go ahead. It gives you the opportunity to reply more. And uh, the people at Parish Online follow all these things. And uh, when they get to a, a sufficient number, then they may actually get around to implementing it. So... Great place for help, the community forum. If there are other people who are online at the time, they will answer your question. Um, and if others aren't, then they, will, they may well get a chance to um, answer you later. If you click on follow on any particular topic, then each time a new uh, entry is made on that topic, you'll get an email to tell you. Uh, unsurprisingly, I follow every topic in the place so that every time someone comes up and asks a question, I can be around to uh, pitch in and see if I can be helpful. Um, 
but it, this is fairly new, so it's still in its infancy. And I think the more people that use it, uh, the more it, it's like everything else in networking, the more it gets used, the more it's useful it's and helpful. So community forum here, knowledge base here, save it as a URL for future reference there. And we're done for sharing. And um, if there are any other questions on any topic within Parish Online, you're welcome to ask. And if you're all happy, I'll say thank you so much for joining me. And Good Anthony, night. you've been silent. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sheila, you wanted to help? Well, we were, we were going to discuss that blue dot thing, won't we, for your village hall. Why, why did I get a blue dot? Yeah. So if you wanted to... Um, share your screen and we can go through it. Now would be the time. Uh, it's back. <laughs> it's back? It's back. Which means it's now an icon. Uh, just as I opposed to a blue dot. Screen first. Because I, I use the same um, yeah. tab on my computer. Because I'm using Windows. So I use <laughs> my tab. It's, I went, I used the same tab for doing the work, for looking at your um, support center. Right. Um, in there. Takes it. So I got the blue dots. Uh, how did I get the blue dots? <gasps> that was in my asset register, wasn't it? Blue dots. You, are, are you on the same screen as your parish online? Sorry, your Zoom yes, screen. On the basic parish online. I've just clicked on asset yeah, register. What, what I'm wondering is whether you can share that screen with me so I can see what you're talking about. I don't. How do I share? I haven't shared my computer for a long time. Okay, so are it's, they the same computer? Those two screens? Because you've got one screen that's it's uh, got the Zoom session in it, right? Where you can see me. On my tablet. And then you, oh, it's on your tablet. Mm -hmm. Well, the simplest way of sharing your screen on the uh, the PC is for you to join this um, Zoom session from the PC. I so, can't. Well, can I? I could. Can I run two sessions then? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just join from your PC now. If you've got a microphone or a sound system on the PC, it's worth no, muting it. You don't? Okay. No, I don't. That's why I use my tablet. Oh, I like. okay. So people who've got microphones on their PC start getting dreadful feedback issues. But My PC is very old, but it's very, it's quite good. So I'm used to it. Yep, that's the main I thing. Don't throw away stuff that works, do you? <laughs> exactly. I have clicked on launch meeting. It's going through. Okay. Good. Yep, you're showing up here, it's coming. And it's very nearly ready. Yeah, I'll, I'll close that. Join with, I'll put com computer audio, even though I haven't got it. Oh, all right. Okay. Right. I think what you really need to do is to share the, is there a video on there or no? Or just, if you go down to the bottom of that screen, Sheila, there'll be a share screen, green, a green button. Yes. Okay, just click on that. Yep, I'll click that. So now I'll go back to the X map. Well, you... it's, I'm not seeing your sharing yet. Oh. So either maybe you clicked it too quickly or try clicking again on that green share button. Oh, sorry, there's a second screen. You have to click on the share, the bottom right corner. So if you go back to your, yes, that PC screen, when you click on share, the green button, it yeah. comes up and says, what do you want to share? And you, it doesn't matter what you click there, you can just click the top left corner, which is your main system. And then down the bottom right, there's a share button that you have to click on. I'm afraid you're talking to um, a bit of a nerd. Okay, what, well, back on there. What do you, what do you, there you go, that's it, that's right. I'm about to see your screen. 
You are screen sharing. I've got a note saying I'm screen sharing. Yeah, and, and I'm, I've got on the same note and I'm just waiting for your PC to catch up with us. So it's getting there, but it hasn't got there yet. There we go. We're excellent. So if you want to, yes, click on that and then move over to your Parish Online tab. Yep, that one. There. Uh, yes. Correct. Yep. Okay, I can now see you, or rather see your Parish Online map. Yes. So, and I got, I did have a whole load of dots, red, those red dots. Was that something to do with Oh, building? that's when you have your dress space turned on. So if you um, scroll down a bit, Sheila, Keep going down the screen. Go down, down, down. Come in. It's, it, there you go. Whoop. Uh, have you gone? Addresses. Uh, yes, exactly. And it'll pop up with another couple of layers. They, and let's click on address space there, that first one. And then it'll all turn red in a second. Give it time. Because uh, uh, my... My broadband here isn't very good in our village. Yeah, I can see that. There they are. I'll bring it up a bit higher so you can see. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, so what was the issue? Why are some red and why are some blue? Yes, these hit. Can, can you see my pointer even? Oh, yes. Yep. The pointer is the Victory Hall is right there. Yep. The dry field and the main road. And it's got three blue dots. Right. So if you click on each one, if you go zoom in a bit further, just to separate them out. So yeah, on your plus sign, that's right. So okay, it gives you a bit more space. There you go. Just scroll to the right a bit. Yes. Drag it right. Takes a while. Yep. No, I understand that. We've all had small low computers. I don't know. We've just I uh, just had to move on to um looks like you need to go one bit bit more further, does it? It's uh it's starting to move for me. There you go. There we go. This is the victory hall just here. Yeah. And it, so each of those dots will represent a different part of the hall as far as the unique public record is concerned. So well, click on that one, and now click on address base plus points, left-hand column. Okay, so that's the main road building with a UPRN that ends in 4082. Yes. See? So now click on one of the other blue dots. This is the cafe. Okay. That's the annex and the cafe. So if you click on there again, yep, good. There's coffee on the So, board. yes, it's a completely different UPRN number. Yeah. And so that, then we've got the, the car. No, I thought there's another one just here. Yes. I think um, you probably, it's, it's buried under the text, isn't it? Yeah, it's under old police house. Yeah. yeah. So, if you zoom out a bit further, the writing will disappear and show you the blue dot. There you go. Well, not quite. It looks like you need to go one more. I just wondered why it was blue and not red. Oh, um, because if you go up to the top corner where it says view. Yeah. And, top, and click on there and then legend. Okay, so now it shows you, um, scroll down a bit till you get address space because you're, what you're looking at is your parish layers there. It so says now, you see, so the blue dots are commercial, oh. the red dots are residential. So that's the difference. Right. Thank you. No, my pleasure. No, uh, quite interesting. It is. I, I think it's a wonderful system, but it takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. And I could, I'm really looking, because I'm in the Environment Working Party as well, and we, we want to add in our Nature Recovery Network plan. Yeah. Um, Good. So all, all the locations of the particular um, protected birds and insects, etc., that we know yes, about. Uh, that's, that's a very common use of the system and a very good use, I think. By the way, those three dots are now clearly visible on your village hall. 
if you wanted to click on the third one. That's the toilet. <laughs> well, that's what you think. What do they think it is? Toilet. Absolutely, public. it's a public convenience. It, 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 um, it has its own UPRN, so very important. Yes, it's all it's all managed by the the blue. Uh, the toilet is actually managed by the parish council. All right. The uh, hall and the cafe on the corner, coffee on the corner, are tr in trust. And it, yes. As a trust. Those. So weirdly, you'd put the um, toilet in the asset register. Yes. But you wouldn't put the village hall in the asset register. Except the actual building. The <laughs> shell, the shell of the building. Right. OK. Well, obviously, you've got it all sorted out in your mind's eye, Sheila. It's the shell. The shell is the responsibility of the <laughs> <laughs> and the running of the of the businesses are yep. in in trust yeah yes no. okay that, that all that that's clearly makes sense um good i'll have it we'll have a play just uh well it's all new to us and right. we want to, the first thing we're going to do is put in the graveyard and yes uh, the, the cemetery Yes, because now yeah. is it is it there already? Have you have you looked at the uh, the cemetery because it gives you the outline boundary? No, if, I haven't looked at the cemetery. Would you want to do that now? Yes. Yeah, so you can uh, turn off. The, I suggest you turn off the asset register. So click on the buildings layer and turn off the buildings layer. No, turn it off first. Well, yes, but you can click anywhere in the layer, uh, and or turn off the address points as well. Yep, no, you you you're doing well. Yep, turn those off. Too slow, isn't it? Well, it's very misleading. Yeah, just... You have to turn it off before you... No, it, it, the thing to do is to not click on the check mark itself. Just click anywhere in the layer, that's all. And now, you see going down a couple... Oops. This picked up again. Well, all just right. click once, and once down in machinery plant equipment. There you go. And then close and then it. You can just click there, yes, to close it up. There you go. And if you go down two more further, you see cemeteries. Yes, exactly. So it'll come up with plots and boundaries. And what you want is boundaries, not plots. So give it a second. And we'll see, do you know where the cemetery is on the map? Yes, I do. It's just... So just, perhaps you need to scroll out a bit until you find, where is it? It's just here. Okay, so, all oh, right, next door to the church, just of course it would be. Cemetery there. All right, so what they're saying is that they know about the allotment gardens, but they don't know about the cemetery. <clears throat> No. So, so what you would do now is go down to the cemetery boundary layer where the check mark is, right yeah. click in that line, and you can add a feature. And now you'll be able to just draw it in. Draw it in? Yes. So if you yeah, start in the top corner, click, click, click once, Sheila, and then draw a line along. So... Uh, I think you've clicked too many times. Um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So you click once every time you get to a change of direction. There you go. You got the hang of this. Yep. Good. Yep. If I know there's two there's two cemetery plots, so let's do that first of all. Sure. That's when you finish, then double click, and that saves it. And you you need to do each one separately. So you double click, and then. You need to put in a name in the left hand side. All right. I'll do that as the new 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 cemetery. Okay. There's two. The, the, there's what right yeah, beside well, if you just click on save now before you do anything else. Let's say, oh yes. And that stores it. It should turn it to red. Okay, to black. That's fine. Now I want to add the new, the next one is you go to the start of the next one. Where's that? Well, it'll, there's, 
isn't this, it? That thin one next door, is it? It goes all the way down to here. Okay, so you're, you're on. You're well on track. And if I click there, click yep. there. When you're doing boundaries like I this, I that. always suggest just you make the first one very quick and dirty. Yeah, that's um, all right. I'll go back just, and play with that. Before you do any, well, hang on a second, Sheila. Just give it a name. If it's at the old cemetery, I know it's the wrong shape. Don't worry about that. We'll change that in a second. Just give it a name in the top. That uh, I'll put down old. Okay. And then there's you see then save it. Save it. Yeah. All around the church itself, there are more graves. Yeah, I understand that. So it's so I'm just waiting for the system to come alive. All right. Now, if you can zoom out, uh, sorry, zoom in a bit further, zoom in quite a lot further, and uh, keep your eye on the left hand one, not the new, on the old. So that's good. Scroll now so you can get to the old one. I've... And you really need, ideally, to be, yes, zoom in a bit further if you can. You, you, you're doing the right thing. This is good. Well, well done. No, this is very good. You're doing fine. Just You can see the old walls there from the, when the church was first built a long, long time ago. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Now, the reason we're doing this is it's so much easier to get the shape right when you're zoomed in like this. So you need to pull the page down a bit. And can you do, click on it and do it? Yeah. yeah, we're just going to do that. So pull the page down a bit so that we can see the old cemetery. I'm getting lines. Yeah. Do we, you, um, mm. Well, hang on a second. Uh, when you go to the left column where it says feature editor, Sheila, click on the X. Because you want to close down the editor. You don't want to add a new record. You want to tweak an old one. Right. So if you want to tweak this one, which is the new one that we're in, let's mm -hmm. say, does it match? It's meant to match those lines in faint, the faint black lines. Yeah. Okay. So go down to the bottom corner by scrolling up a bit. The bottom corner. Yeah. This is just a good starting point. Yes. All right. I'm just waiting for the map to catch up with us. Right, so in the top left corner, there's a pencil. Click on the pencil because you're going to edit now. All right, now you can pull that bottom corner down to the right place, just pull it down. Yeah. There you go. And you can do that, tweak that all the way around. It's much easier to do at a large scale. So you may need to scroll up the map a bit further. Oh, I see, I can do that easy. Yes. And now you now you can get the cemetery to follow the correct outlines very simply. And certainly that old cemetery that you've drawn in is entirely the wrong shape. Yes. So to, to change that one, let's just say you finished with the first one now. So you would scroll down and click on save at the bottom of the left column. Come on, stop. Come on, stop. Nearly there. It's not going down anymore. Oh, in that case, click on the X and it'll ask you if you really mean to finish. Yes, well, it's done it. No, it's done it. All right. So what you want to do now is click on the old cemetery, that triangle one. Oh, just click on it so it pulls up the record to your left. Now click on the pencil to edit it. And now pull, pull it into the shape you want it now. So if I pick it up and move it over here. Exactly. Yep. And you just, anywhere there, just pull it. Yeah. There you go. You, you, you can straighten out those bits simply. Yeah, there you go. You've really got the hang of this. Okay, good. That's fine. I could do that. Yep. Good. Thank you. Well, my That's pleasure. My pleasure. The it's thing to do is when you finish putting it into shape where you want it, don't forget to click on say exactly save so that it saves the new shape. And the actual grave plots, I just put a spot, do I? 
That's what I would suggest. Yes. Um, do they show up on the photo on the aerial photography? You probably don't know. So let's do that now, Sheila. You see where in the green bars it's got aerial data sets. Yeah. So click on that on the little down arrow there. Data sets one. Yeah. Now click on the 12.5. Yeah, just it's going to take a while, so be patient, but it is working. You can see it spinning around. Okay, so certainly in the old cemetery, you can see the graves, can't you? Them, yeah. see, all the, see all the headstones. You can see all the new, that's new cemetery. I'm sorry, yes, then I beg your pardon, I got the wording wrong. So in the old cemetery, oh, you can see the headstones in the old one, where, where I imagine the old one's going to end up being. It's all down through there. Yes, and so you all you do is, is, is you go into... Um, the cemetery plots is probably a polygon. You know, I haven't even looked at that recently. Let me just have a look at mine. One second. Where's online? Go into it. Let's turn off the building. Let's turn off the asset register. Let's turn off the base code. Let's go into cemeteries. Let's go into cemetery plots. And what sort of layer are you? So to get the individual graves themselves, Sheila, um, you, they don't give you the opportunity to do that in the cemetery plots. What they do in the cemetery plots is give you the chance to, to do the outline of each particular plot. Um, so I would suggest you create a new parish layer, which you call, I know, gravestones or something. And then you just make it the geometry type, you make a point. You familiar with what I'm talking about when I say that? I, do, I haven't done the layers, but I did do the training on the layers. Okay, so um, <clears throat> when you create a new layer, the second question you get asked, I think, after the title is what sort of geometry do you want? And the geometry that you want is a point. So it gives you three choices. It gives you, do you want to do that now? Just fun, so that we, we've covered it. So if, if you now go to your parish layers in the left-hand column. Parish layers. Yes, yeah, so scroll up. You need to be more towards the top. Yeah, oh, keep, go, keep going up, yeah. There you go, whoops, okay. So, uh, whoa, isn't that interesting? You don't, you've never done it. We haven't you done that. have a parish layer, if good. You. But that's easy, easily fixed. So what you need to do, what happens if you go up to the create menu at the top? Does it let you add a layer or do you have to say? No, it doesn't. Okay. So go to the administration cogwheel, the cogwheel top right hand corner. I have to move this. <laughs> yes, the photographs are in the way, aren't they? <laughs> Good. So whoa who are you logged in as you don't have any administration so you're a, you're not logged on as administrator are you don't know i'm just this is the, well, the access i thought i was an administrator well so if i look down the, come down to the bottom row of the map uh, yeah. and then just to the right of the column on the left is your name shelia at yeah. 18 ub019 right. so it looks to me as if Sheila is not administrator because you can't no. do the things that you're supposed to do. So is there somebody else who is administrator in Parish Online? Yes, I expect it's Helen who actually set it all up. OK, so what you need to do is to ask Helen if she'll make you at the very least a data manager, if not also an administrator. And it's very easy for her to do that. And I can help you or help her if she needs help. But you can't do anything about um, getting a parish layer in place until you become a data manager. Yeah. Or, or better yet, I think you should be an administrator, Sheila. I, I think I am supposed to be. It's just it's so, so, all so new. Um, yes. Well, it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet because, believe me, you aren't one at the moment. <laughs> Helen, Helen has the, all the access rights and she's... Um, 
I, I did the I did the evaluation of Parish Online against the GIS system that is provided by um, the uh, oh, who is it? There's a, another GIS system. I can't remember who it is. Why? No. But I did the evaluation last last summer and agreed to go with Parish Online. It was simpler. Right. Good. Um, was it Pair Technology? The other one. It could have been. Yes. Right. Well, anyway. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, actually, we've only just bought, we haven't long bought this, and okay. I've only just got the space and time to start looking at it and helping them set it all up. Okay. Is Sheila someone that you can get hold of at the moment? Sorry, Sheila, I mean, you're Helen, is it? Your administrator? Just, she's on holiday now. Yeah. Until okay. next <laughs> so you're stuck. Yes, it doesn't matter. No. I can do this thing, you know, this thing yes, about the... That's, uh, that's, that's fine. Okay. But then... In order for you to create new parish layers, um, mm. you need to be an administrator. Yeah. So I can talk her through it, or if she goes into the knowledge base and clicks on users, it'll tell her how to set you up as an administrator. I'm sure she'll be able to do that. She's, got, she's, very, yeah. open, she's very technically minded. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Yes. Except she, she put my, spelt my name wrong. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah, well, that's easily done, isn't it? With a little bit of um, typing error. Do you, um, Sheila, are there other questions you want to ask whilst I'm here? Um, but you've got a lot to go through today. I had three questions that what they were to do with layers and also um, providing transparency to residents, how we gave access to resi residents in the parish to view it to view Parish Online? Well, I, I, I think the simplest thing to do is just to create an account called Reader. Yes. And make it a read-only account and give it a very simple password. Um, and then tell everybody to use that. Because it's a multi-user system, they, it doesn't matter if they all come in at once, they can still go ahead and use it. And we can give them access through our um, website. You know, could they? Oh, isn't it simple just to give them the URL? Just email them the URL for Parish Online. Well, couldn't we just put it onto our website and that say people, if they want to look any more detail, they can look on the URL? Of on course. The... Yes, of course you can. You just put it in as a link. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course. No, you're quite right. You could do that. Um, especially for the school, because the school are very interested. Okay, well then, uh, all the more reason to give them a read-only account and, and just call it something simple like reader because then everyone remembers it uh, yeah. and they can all use it. Give them a simple password. Um, and in fact, you might uh, put that on the on the website. You know, click yeah. here to access Parish Online, use account reader and yeah. password reader or whatever. It's also because we wanted to put information on. We say to put uh, on Facebook, say, can you check this for us? Is this right? Yes, that's a good idea. Very good idea. I like that. Yes, we want we want to make it more, be more transparent with. Of the, course, yeah, and, and be interactive with it with the community. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. That's given me enough to do and think about for the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sheila, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Hope you've enjoyed the session. I have. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye do you bye. know about do you know about the banter sessions? Yes, I'll tell you about bye. those. So on Friday afternoons, there's a group of parish clerks and councillors who are all very skilled with parish online, and they just get together for an hour, and anyone is welcome to drop in and say, I have a question. Can you please do this, do that, this other? Um, and you can they will answer you then and there. Well, and it's, it's a regular Zoom session. I'll, I'll mention it in the email I'm going to send out to you shortly. But uh, it's a great way of just getting questions answered if you happen to be free somewhere between three o'clock and four o'clock on Friday afternoons. Thank you very much, Graham. I'm sure we'll be taking advantage of that in time. <laughs> Good. Well, I look forward to seeing you. And if you need help in getting your user rights sorted out, let me know. Thank you ever so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.